Hello everyone, welcome back to our guys expert mode let's play. Today guys, I am back. Back for good. I know it's been about um, two months almost at this point since our last upload and about a month since I last made a community post probably. However, I am genuinely back. I haven't had much motivation to play Minecraft, let alone record it. I wore myself out over the course of December, January, and February playing so much every day that it just wore me out to even boot up the game, let alone record an episode. I never want to force out content on this channel and I never want to feel the need to like, I never want to feel the need that I have to upload a video. And I am sorry to anyone who has been supporting the series. You guys deserved a better response and better communication for me. However, I was lacking on that front. Nevertheless, I really want to finish this series and I've had motivation over the past week to come back and record some episodes. Now, I'm not going to be committing to a schedule. I am not going to say there's going to be three episodes a week, five episodes a week, or whatever. I'm going to be able to record and upload freely as I see fit, so I don't feel like I'm rushing through things and I am making the content I want to produce. Because each episode is now taking me upwards of 12 hours to complete, whether that be off-screen progression, on-screen recording, or back-end video editing, thumbnail creation, all of this adds up and it just takes a very long time to make the episodes I want to produce, which I am completely fine with. However, I am a very busy person outside of this, so it is. it just comes down to being able to fit this all into my schedule and also having the motivation to do it. Now, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So, I just got some things from our loot bee, and I have to familiarize myself with my surroundings again as it's been a little while since I've played. However, if I go down here, I believe I did this shortly after I stopped playing. Yes, I did set up the silicon, the printed silicon up here with our brine into chlorine. And this was, if I remember correctly, back here. Yeah, so we had liquid chlorine or brine being made with our thermal evaporation chamber back here. I set this guy up last episode as well, I believe, to get the wireless power. And then we made chlorine over here in the electrolytic separator, which is brine, which makes sodium and chlorine. Chlorine gets put into a pressurized reaction chamber. And I have a redstone furnace with the similar setup I had to these guys here, which is just an ender chest being filled from over there with certain scorch dust, which goes into a redstone furnace, which pumps right into the pressurized, pressurized reaction chamber. And then under here, I just have polyethylene going from an ender tank down below. And then we have 2000 per silicon. I'll probably put an upgrade in this just so we can have a lot to be made. Here, I don't have power for some reason. Oh, it's missing the power cable. Not sure how that happened, but it is. I will get one added there. However, I do have silicon being made. Uh, I have my kerosene still being made from our oil up in the moon. What's going on here? Latex? Oh, it's just a visual bug. Okay, and then we have our mendocine mushrooms. Everything producing is normal. Awesome. So that is the one thing I did off camera, I believe. Oh, and I made two more vaults because we were running out of space in here. And I kept having to remove stuff and put in chests. But I believe I showed that off. What else did I do? Oh, one more thing. So, there is a quest. This recently got added, and I did this off screen. I just had this going for a few hours, I guess, while I was doing the silicon and all that. It is called 99 Bottles of Lava on the Wall. Wait. And this quest here, if you submit 10,000 buckets of lava into the task screen like I, show, like I have here, you will get a creative fluid tank, which is full of lava. Now, this is because you need to have a lot and a lot of obsidian for this pack. Whether that be obsidian for refined obsidian ingots, which is mainly the thing you need. Refined obsidian for circuits and all the mechanism stuff from that. However, you need a lot of obsidian. I was originally going to go the obsidian B route, which produces obsidian comb, which in the fabrication matrix makes obsidian dust. And this guy here you can make into refined obsidian dust with diamonds. Now, that's the method I was gonna go down. However, I found this and we can just make uh, obsidian simply with the material generator by pumping lava into a pedestal. So that is the method I'm going to do. However, you can go the B route. So what I did is I set up a magma crucible 
that just took this cobblestone from here and put it in as well as my dripstone farm and slowly but surely it made 10,000 buckets of lava here. So I recommend everyone doing this because you will need a lot of obsidian and obsidian otherwise without infinite lava would require you to create your lava yourself and there's several ways to do that however this is a very very easy way to go about doing it. The obsidian bee is nice though because these are pretty easy to make. You get blazing bee eggs from one of the chests in the villagers or hoglins or whatever they're called and then you get the things as done. Anyways sorry I'm a little rusty with the recording. This feels like my first episode all over again. However what I want to do today, without a doubt, is move to Applied Energistics. This guy, my sword selector, is amazing, don't get me wrong. However, it only can do so much for me. There is crafting limitations, I can't auto-craft, there's storage limitations, there's just a lot of limitations. So, what I want to do is I may as well grab this, but what I want to go ahead and do is get into Applied Energistics. And another fact that I did do the silicon already, is a big help and oh i also did set these inscribers off screen with some omnidirectional hoppers and i have four of them as you see here i did test this out to make sure it actually works with three inputs and an output i figured it would but i had to test it however to use the inscribers first of all it is just four steel surface quartz crystal sticky pistons and copper ingots in our crafter here so we used the eight slots, left the middle one open, and we used our Certus Quartz Crystals from our Amethyst Golems over here. And I'll grab the rest out while I'm at it and throw them into our system. Now with those two things, all you have to do is make each inscriber. And that is a diamond, a conductive solder and alloy, a printed silicon. For these guys, it's a dash plate, conductive solder and alloy, printed silicon, Certus Quartz, conductive solder and alloy, printed silicon, and then gold with the conductive alloy. Now, to make these guys, it's actually really, really easy. I've gone ahead and made a bunch. All you have to do is put one copper, six tin, and two redstone, and then an induction smelter. And this guy's really easy. If you set auto input and auto output on, and then do input output, you can throw all the materials in a chest. It'll input the ones it can use, and it'll output conductive soldering alloys like so. Makes your job a lot easier. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and throw, I guess, three stacks in each, just for now. And then we'll see what we can do with the rest. Wait, that's not what I want to do. Something like this. There we go. Now all those are filled up. I will get a stack or a bunch of stacks of the silicon as well. And then I'll grab a bunch of stacks of gold, diamonds, and certus quartz. However, I do not have the dash plates to fill them up. As dash plates are very expensive. It is 9 dash per at the moment. And while we just don't have the upkeep to do so... However, we will once we get the implosion chamber, which requires us to make TNT, which is something I will get to hopefully this episode or maybe next episode. And once we do that, we'll have a lot better method of getting dash. Ooh, we almost fell off the island. Not a good start. And then what I say, gold, diamonds, and certus quartz. So we'll do certus, gold, and diamonds. Perfect. And they're crafting. Perfect. So, we should get one of each, like so, shortly, perfect. And, these guys here, you just put four into the assembly controller with the laser program, and you will get four presses. So once I have four of each, I will take them down below, and we can shortly craft them all into their respective things. And if you remember, just down here, we have the laser. Oh, are we on the drill currently? Yes, we're on the drill currently. Okay, we'll switch to the laser. And there we go, all three are done, which should be a quest I'd assume, but I guess it's not. However, I will continue to make these as they come out of our inscribers. Now the next thing we want to do now that we have the ability to make the processors is go ahead and make an ME controller. This guy requires an energy cell, fluix blocks, and skystone blocks. Skystone blocks, pretty easy to make, you just smelt them. And the skystone we get from pure daisies from moonstone. We've done that before. Now fluix blocks, we have to make fluix crystals. Fluix crystals are simply in the dissolution chamber. You require charged sort of quartz, regular nether quartz, refined obsidian dust, 
mana fuse copper, signal and blend, and destabilized redstone. Now it's a lot of things to do, however it does give you four fluid crystals, and later down the line just one of each plus destabilized redstone will give you two flux crystals in the quantum assembler and the fabrication matrix will allow you to make flux combs and flux bees later on the line as well and fluix bees are going to be our method of getting it because i'm pretty sure fluix bees are really easy to make yeah it is just simply a fluix crystal a fluix yeah a fluix pearl over a spatial bee and spatial bees are simply a charged search quartz over a silicon bee which is a printed silicon over a crystalline bee and we have hundreds of crystalline bee genes due to our farm over there and slightly in preparation for that i did this however each one will give us silicon bees which will give us silicone we will have our spatial bee which will give us where is it these guys for search quartz and then we'll also use the fluix b to get ourselves fluix comb which will give us fluix crystals so that is the reason i went with the crystalline b but it was also just very useful to do however that's how we'll get our fluix crystals in the future once we get our bee production actually set up however for now we're going to have to go the old-fashioned route to get these which is the dissolution chamber now we can do all of this pretty easily refined obsidian dust is simply dust with diamond and for the mana fused copper we've made in the past, nether quartz very easy, destabilized redstone we've made, signal and blend we've made, charged surface quartz. It isn't like the normal way to get it. You don't get it from mining, you don't get it from charging in a charger, you use the power charger right here. And it's simply one surface quartz in it and you will get a one back. Very, very simple. So I will take two stacks of this guy and we'll bring it down to our charger. And simply like before, if you missed it, these guys are really, really easy to automate. We will just take this stuff out and we will set the whitelist over here and we'll do one at a time and throw these guys in here. And once they perform, they'll come out the other end charged, which is super, super, super useful. Now I've gone ahead and got everything I needed to make fluix crystals. So that is the nether quartz, the charged surface quartz, Refined obsidian dust, signal blend, and man infused copper, like we showed before. I added a bucket of destabilized redstone in here, and this guy is going to slowly work. Now, I went ahead and grabbed two stacks or a stack of everything I need, and I'm just going to make a stack of these, or as much as does, I don't know. We'll see. However, I got my four right there, and the way this is working is with input here, I have it on pull, and output, I have it on push, and for the destabilized redstone, I went ahead and entertained my volatile redstone from below and set up a fraction still up here just because I didn't want to ruin down ruin my passive wall down below just for this small little thing. Also, I didn't mention this, however, I went ahead and upgraded our magnet system or power generator with layered magnets. These guys here are really easy to make. It is just electrum with the previous magnet, so it is for overcharged electrum with redstone magnet in the induction smelter did the exact same thing as i'm doing with the coils just throw them in there and let it go i also expanded it back to more and added two more generator coils now we're making 11.8 thousand fe per tick and the ultimate energy cube is full and i have 46 million fe in the universal cables as well which allows my guy over here to make many many things however i'm still using the gold furnace or gold ingot technique to limit how many slots I have in my arc furnace, just so it doesn't use too much power. Now I've gone ahead and gave my first four flux dust or flux crystals we got to Kellen Divine over here, and that will allow us to make an energy cell. And I do believe I have the sky stone already made. Yep, I made a stack of those. So all I need is eight flux blocks left. Now this should be done over here. Oh, no, it only has made 16, so that is 4. However, once we have the next 16, we will make our block, and we should be good to go to get our first ME controller up and running. Now that I have all four flux blocks, we come over to our miniaturization crafter, and I could set the schematic cannon for this, but since it is pretty obvious, to me at least, I don't even need to look up the thing. I assume this will be the recipe. Now, if it's not, that will be very awkward. However, I do need a processor. This guy here, the engineering. And if I chuck that guy in, yeah, there we go. Perfect. But yeah, that was pretty obvious. There was 18 skystone blocks, 8 fluix, and 1 energy cell. By process of elimination, that's how it looked. 
but you can just use the blow up crafter right there just to figure it out. Now, we have our MV controller. However, this guy won't do anything by itself, and we need some things to accompany it. Now, those are the crafting terminal. This guy is really easy to make. We just need some annihilation cores. Oh, these are made differently. Wait, no. We got them from villages, I believe, right? Yes, we did. We got 13 and 15 from villages, so we do not have to worry about making that just yet. However, these require the fabrication matrix in polished redstone and the charge charter quartz and energized glowstone as well, both in the fabrication matrix, which aren't very hard to make at all. However, we can skip it thanks to the villages. And then we just simply need an illuminated panel, which isn't hard to make, aluminum plates, some quartz glass, which we've made in the past. And what else do we need? A calculation press and a crafting table. That should be all very easy to make. So we'll grab those, grab this guy. Oh, and all we need is a crafting table. And there it goes. Simply put, we have our terminal. Now I do need some Fluix cables. Can't go in here without any. So simply quartz fiber. Can I make it easier? Okay, metal press rod with quartz dust. Should be easy to make. And I will also grab myself some more. Oh, I need the rod while I'm here. I will grab myself my rest of my Fluix crystals while I'm over here. I also did use the time in the bottle in this guy to speed them up because otherwise that would take way too long and we'll do the same over here so with those guys there i do want to grab some string from this guy and just cover them because then we can make smart cables and well smart cables are just a superior so make a bunch of wool put them in like that make a bunch of these and we'll turn them into smart cables like so glowstone and redstone now simply a controller crafting terminal, and cables is all you need to make the system itself. However, I can't currently store anything in it. Now, normally what you'd have to do is you'd have to go ahead and make some ME drives, right? You'd have to make these guys here, which aren't hard to make at all. However, you would need the drives as well. Now, the drives aren't too hard to make. You require some silver, rose quartz, and hardened glass, as well as the disc housing, which is netherite gear and the item cell housing, and then storage components, which are the basic recipe, which is logic processor, sort of squirts with redstone. And they need to upgrade them, and upgrade them, and upgrade them. And each one of these require a higher tier. So dash plating, then you require, where is it? Aluminum plating, then you require interior plating, and each previous tier. So while this is a very doable thing, it is not what we're going to do. And we're going to continue cheesing our way through life with our vaults down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a storage bus, if I could spell. Now, what storage buses allow you to do is it allows you to connect inventories such as chests, vaults, anything of the like to your ME system. And your ME system will be able to read these inventories and say, okay, I have this inventory, I'm going to use it. Now, the thing is with these guys, they require a channel. So that is why we went ahead and made the controller itself because with an energy acceptor, we would only allow, we'd only be able to have eight channels, which means eight or seven connected inventories as well as our terminal. And that just won't work. So we went ahead and made a controller. However, these storage buses are really easy to make. It has two pistons and an ME interface. The interface itself is aluminum plates, glass, and one of each core. So go ahead and make 12 of those. We won't need that many for now. And I should be able to make 12 buses. Nope, I'm missing pistons. There we go. And that is 12 storage buses. Now for these guys, what I'm going to do is I'll probably just simply stick the underneath like this. And we'll do this one just right there like so. And all you have to do is connect them together like that. And we will bring it up to our core which I'll probably do directly here. I don't really need the storage lectern anymore, do I? So we'll do controller right here. And you know what? I don't know why I overcomplicated this. I can simply, did I get that? Ah, yes, I did. I could just do it like this. Do one in the middle and do it like that. Yeah, that would make my life a lot easier, wouldn't it? So something like so. We'll go up in the middle like this and I will do a crafting terminal right here. Now, all I need to do is power this guy. 
So maybe I do want to bring him down one. And what I'll do is, thankfully, I have this guy over here. Otherwise, that probably went... That would have went really poorly. And what I can do is grab my flux point and stick it right there. And now we have our ME terminal all set up. Then we go descending. And I do need to add this one more thing, which is some cables. These guys right here. And I do need to connect this one as well, which won't be too bad. Storage bus on the end, like so. And with those added, I now have everything in my system. Except these guys here, which I will just go ahead and throw in individually. And I will keep our... I guess I'll just keep these guys for now. Because it can't really hurt to have them. But to make this easier, I'll just go this way. Now we have our ME terminal set up with all of our inventory and everything added. And this will just make life so much easier. However, I do want to make it slightly smaller. So that is that. I should have a bunch more of these made up. Yes, we do. And with these guys, I'm not sure why one only made 20. However, we will throw these down here. Grab the completed ones out. And we should be able to make a lot more things from Applied Energistics now. Secondly, the things we want to get done today is all of those are crossed off. I want to continue in the process of the quest book. Now, Mars is our next destination, and that requires a lot of things still to get to Mars. Mainly resources, however, there's a few more crafting recipes we have to actually get done beforehand. And the main one is this quantum assembler here. Now, simple, dash plates, machine frame, and quantum mechanisms. We've made all of these things already. Quantum mechanism simply is a source gem with the atomic alloy. And it'll give you four quantum mechanisms instead of having to do this recipe sequence. So I'm going to be using that recipe this time. However, the only other thing we need to do today is make advanced control circuits. These guys are very simply put, volatile redstone, which we have plenty of, and a signalum processor. These guys are two basic control circuits, signalum ingot, and a printed silicon inside our pressure chamber down below. And eventually you can use the advanced mixer. Now these guys are very easy. We're going to be using the quantum, uh, not the quantum mechanism, the logic circuit method because, well, we have so many circuit backplanes available to make. Now I'm just waiting for a bit of signalum to finish. There we go. And down here, what I'll do is I'll throw 32 of those in. Wait, no, I need all 64. 32 of those and 32 silicon. And what this will allow is... I should grab some more silicon out of here just so I can fill it up later. But what that will do is it will slowly but surely pressurize and create signal and processors. It should be 32 of them. Perfect. And with these guys, we can throw them into our fluid encapsulator down here with the redstone. Where is it? Right here. And these will slowly but surely make dash processors. I will give it a little boost. And there we go. Ooh, that is too fast. However, we did make ourselves our advanced control circuits. And yeah, I will let that come back to speed because apparently I do not have enough power to power that, which is fine. However, we do now have advanced control circuits. Also, I did use up all of my power doing that, it seems, somehow. Not entirely sure how. Oh, this needs more than 5,000, that's why. Let's go with 50. There we go. And this should be back online. Yes, perfect. Awesome. So, now that we have those... If I click that, what I want to make with this guy is the fabrication matrix. Now, this is the quantum assembler. Now, the quantum assembler itself is a multi-block that requires a few different things to actually function. And that should be all in the quest book here. Maybe not. No, it is not. However, if we go over to our schematic cannon here, I should be able to grab the quantum assembler and view what it looks like. So it is a decently sized machine. However, if I place it right here and then do something like, okay, and do something like that, you will see everything you need to make one. All right, so I have everything listed here that I will need to make the quantum assembler. An easy way to check exactly what you need is once you throw your schematic into the cannon and you put it out, you can actually place it down and see exactly what you need. However, if you don't know what the blocks you're looking at are, 
you can make yourself a clipboard or material and it will turn into a material checklist if you throw it into your schematic cannon and here you will show exactly what you need on both pages whether that be one page or two now down here it says submachine block times two except you only need one of them and that is the quantum assembler i think it is only just because each recipe makes two and it isn't quite sure what that block is so it just takes the recipe count however we have the material generator or the quantum assembler structure ready to go and then we just need to craft it and that requires dash plates again in which i do not have however if i grab out 36 of these guys here i can go make some dash plates which is just the multi-server press and i'm not sure why i grabbed the plates themselves however we'll do like that compact machine wall is enriched redstone onto steel casing that'll make 27 plenty more than enough the quantum ring here is some dense cable which isn't too bad to make we'll just grab some of our cable here and make eight of them perfect and we need some energy cells as well which will require some more fluix and then the fluix pearl to make some more dust so i'm going to make a bunch more fluix dust the space chamber is a machine frame from rf tools which we luckily have one of however i will need to make two of these guys so i'll need some more plastic which i should have plenty of and then fluix blocks into stairs and these guys you can make in the stone cutter so you don't waste any blocks super useful and then vibrant quartz glass very easy so i will collect everything i need here make my dash blocks and make some quantum or sorry make some entangle blocks which is just flux pearls effervescence machine frames in aluminum glass which is aluminum plate with hardened glass so i'm going to go ahead and make everything here and then we'll get our quantum assembler up and running swiftly so i've gone ahead and gathered everything we need made the entangle blocks i also made 16 total so i have 10 extra after this because entangle blocks are one of the best block in the game it is unfortunately only 32 blocks away in this pack that is set by the ftp devs normally they are allowed to go a bit further than that i personally might change the config to allow entangle blocks to go further or i might confine myself to the 32 blocks however there it's really fun to go in the same dimension and be able to do a lot of things because it allows a lot of machines to become a lot more compact and also look a lot nicer however i will set my schematic here down place in the six entangled blocks do the compact chambers like so and what am i missing two three like this do the space chamber block on the back do these guys here and I'm realizing I forgot the quantum ring entirely. And I'm not sure how I managed to forget the most important part of the machine. However, I somehow did. But for now, I will do the stairs. Like so. And we will go get the quantum ring. Because, yeah, that is the most important part. I had everything but this made for some reason. And this guy is simply put your quantum ring like this. Quantum link chamber in the middle. And boom now our machine is up and running however not quite i do need to provide it power and i also do need to provide it with six ways of inputting fluids and items however right now all we need is one fluid input hopefully and six item inputs now these guys are used to do a lot of different things such as making redstone pearls variable cards turbine vents this so the conductive soldering alloy it basically eliminates the necessity for this guy over here all your mechanical crafter needs but it also does a lot more things as well and it'll allow us to make tangle blocks a lot easier it will allow us to make precision mechanisms easier as well as all the space plating now that is the main thing we're going to be using this for is space plating because if we look up the quest line the next thing we need to do is make dash space plating, which is platinum plates, space plating, enriched carbon, dash plates, and molten cheese. Cheese will be from the moon. There is no way to actually make cheese, unfortunately. So what we're going to have to do is actually get the cheese from the moon. And moon cheese ore can be drilled from the moon with laser drills. However, I'm just going to use a digital miner and mine up a bunch of cheese ore. And then we'll just melt that down ourselves. Dash plates we will make an implosion crafter so we can make these a lot cheaper platinum plates simply put platinum being squished down so i will automate platinum creation which is pretty easy it is a and a metallurgic confuser 
So we'll automate our IS name over there. And what else do we need? We need space plating, which is the space material that we've made before with aluminum, copper, and steel. And that will allow us to make our dash space plating block and that will get us to Mars. So realistically, it is pretty easy to actually get to Mars. It just requires a lot of resources and a lot of time. So in the next episode, what I want to go ahead and do is set up behind us the automation of our quantum assembler, get the automation of platinum up and running. So we have a lot of it and as well, collect all the other resources we need to make the dash space painting blocks and head ourselves up into Mars, which is we really, really fun. So today we got our ME terminal set up in our ME crouching system and all that applied energistics. And we got this quantum assembling, quantum assembly line, whatever you want to call it in the back setup. And also we did a few more things with applied energistics with the inscribers and some volatile redstone back there for some other reason as well. I'm sorry for the lackluster episode. I know it was a bit all over the place. I am just getting back into the feel of recording. However, I am really excited to actually be able to continue the series and hopefully finish it finally because by this point, since I started, the series probably should have been done. So I apologize once again, but I hope you guys all enjoyed. And if you did, leave a comment down below. If you learned something or really to teach me anything, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this and subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads because they will be coming. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.